Hey guys and welcome to Indigrit. In today's video we're going to be doing a redo video of what is my most popular video on my channel. So my most popular video is the little tiny amigurumi whale video. Many of my subscribers come from that video so I imagine this will be probably of interest to many people. Um, hopefully. <laughs> That's the goal. Um, but I wanted to do a redo and I wanted to do a little bit of a twist on the tail. So usually the tail looks like this. I haven't been super crazy about how I did the tail on the original one, but I actually really like how this one turned out. So I figured I would show people how to do this tail and I would put timestamps for my other video on uh, when it comes to just the tail. Uh, aspect of it and it's also uh, written on the pattern on my Ravelry page so you know there's that but if you want to learn how to do this whale I'm gonna try really hard to go really slow um, I know I have a tendency to kind of lightning quick through things and just assume that people know things um, but I'm gonna try to make this as intro 101 uh, friendly as I can so it's gonna be a uh, tutorial on how to do the whale and his new little tail. So for this you're going to need some worsted weight yarn or a size 4 also what it's known as. Uh, you can use Aran weight, uh, really anything will work. You just want to make sure that your hook will be small enough and tight enough to make it so that your stitches are nice and close together. Um, I'm using Karen Simply Soft Party today because I like the sparkle. This is just the Simply Soft Party in white. It also has a slight sparkly uh, sheen to it. It's got little sparkles all throughout it. And I'm using a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. Let's see if I can get that to, yep, like that. It is a Susan Bates and I'm using a darning needle and you will also need some 9 millimeter to 12 millimeter depending on how big you want your safety eyes safety eyes and uh, I believe these are 12s I'm pretty sure and you will also need some polyfill these little guys don't take a lot so if you just get like a pound bag of it you can make a ton of these little guys you can also use like cotton and all kinds of other stuff I've used tails to stuff like uh, the yarn mill ends, like the little like tails that I cut off of things. I save those and I use that as stuffing a lot of the time. So you can use a lot of different things as stuffing. My first amigurumi that I ever made, which amigurumi is the Japanese term for stuffed animal, if people didn't know that. Um, my first amigurumi was a little ninja that I created. Um, it was the only for pattern that was really out and about during that time when I first learned how to crochet. I stuffed that bad boy with some toilet paper, which, you know, looking back on that now, who boy. Probably not the best choice, but I'm pretty happy with how things have turned out in the long run and I definitely would suggest getting some polyfill if that is what you're interested in doing what's the best. You can also get like filling beads, all these different things will work, but in today's video I'm going to be using polyester fiber fill. You can get a big pound of this anywhere. I have a 20 pound box, so if anybody has an idea of what that looks like, it is literally a box that is like three foot by four foot, it's huge. And I spent like 30 bucks on it because I had a 60% off coupon, it was spectacular. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, so let's get started. Quick note before we start, I actually forgot to add this in, so this is future Cody post edit. Um, I go through the front loop only when it comes to my amigurumi, so uh, make sure that you are going through the front loop only. I find that that makes things a little bit easier and bubblier and it looks cute. You can go through both loops if that's what you're more comfortable with but I prefer going through just the front loop so this little loop right here when you're going through your stitches um, I think that it just looks bubblier and also I am thinking about doing some little kits on how to make these uh, on my Etsy let me know down below in the description if you're interested in uh, those I can do some kits for the Luna squishes, uh, some for the whales or the bees or any other thing. So let me know down below uh, if you'd be interested in any of those. All right, back to the tutorial. So I just pulled the center out of my work, and for this, you're going to want to be comfortable with making a slip knot, working in the round, 
and single crocheting. I'm going to show you generally, fairly slowly how to do these things, but uh, I do have a playlist down below where I go much slower in an actual like 101 series on how to make the ring, how to do a slip knot, how to do chaining, how to do all those things. So if you are very much a beginner, I would definitely recommend going over to that playlist and learning a little bit more slowly how to do the uh, slip knot, how to chain, working in the round, doing single crochets, and increasing and decreasing. Those are all the methods that I'll be using and showing today, and I'll show you exactly how I go about doing those things. So that's my little cactus dude that I keep my darning needles in, so I'm gonna put him over there. So the slip knot is essentially, I'm going to take my end right here, I'm gonna cross it over my working piece right here. I'm gonna kind of hold it. So this is my tail and this is my working piece right here. I'm going to then go under and pick up my tail and kind of go like that. I'm gonna do that again just to show. So I'm taking my tail I'm going that and bringing my tail over. So this is my working yarn and this is my tail. So I'm gonna go over with my finger, I kind of crisscross, so I make a figure eight like that. And I grab my tail and make sure not to put all the way through, but just through enough that I can do that. Now I have a very loose, what I call a slip knot. It'll come right out if I go boink like so. So I'm going to do that again a little bit quicker, crisscross over, pick up, go through. That is our slip knot. We are then going to take our crochet hook and we're going to place it right through that slip knot loop and we're going to pull on our tail and pull it nice and tight, but not too too tight because you still want to be able to get through things. Now I'm going to do what I call my magical ring. And my magical ring is not the actual magical ring method. Um, you can use the actual method, uh, method. I don't have a tutorial for that because I'm not actually good at that method. So I typically just do chaining two. And to chain two, you're literally just going to cross your yarn over. I go left to right, but most people go right to left. So I'm just gonna go left to right pretty much for all of it. Uh, I find that my stitches look bubblier when I go this way, so that's why I do it that way. I learned the wrong way and then I just liked how it looked even though I know that there is a proper way of doing it. So again, this is gonna be a really long video where I'm just gonna explain literally everything and why I do everything that I do. I'm gonna over explain, so I apologize in advance if that's annoying to some people. Um, I'd rather over explain than under explain because I did get complaints in my last video over that. Um, if you uh, are a bit more uh, not super introductory, my narwhal video is actually a good middle space where it's actually in shot and you can see those things where I'm not gonna over explain things too too much either. But I am a chatty Cathy no matter what in all my videos, so you know, that's just my channel. All right, so chaining is I go from left to right. It's all right if you go right to left, it will work either way. So I'm gonna go right to left, pick up with my hook and pull that through that loop. That's my first chain, and you can see this little V that I made right there. I'm gonna do that again and chain two. So now that I've chained two, you can see two little Vs right there. I'm going to skip the first, I mean the second chain that I just created. I'm going to skip the second chain right there, and I'm going to go inside of the first chain that I made. I put my hook inside, and now I'm going to do uh, a single crochet. So a single crochet is when I wrap and pull that through the loop, and now I've got two loops on my hook, and I'm gonna wrap again, and I'm gonna pull that through both those lo loops. We're gonna go back inside this first chain and do that again five more times. So we're going to single crochet six in our first round. This is essentially what our first round is going to be. So we're gonna wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through. That's two single crochets. Go back inside. And it's okay that you notice that this is gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. There's a giant little, there's a giant hole right here. It's okay because when we pull on our tail, it will close up. It's good for it to be a little bit loose right now because it makes it easier for us to get our stitches in. 
wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through. So now we have one, two, three in our little ring is what I call it. That's why it's an adjustable ring it's because literally when I pull on the tail, I can make it as loose or as tight as I want it to be. So we're gonna wrap and wrap. That's four and we're gonna wrap and wrap. That's five, wrap and wrap. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is our first round. And so now I'm going to pull that tail while holding my ring like so, just pull it, but not so tight that you're gonna tear your yarn or anything like that. Um, and we are going to start working across. I hope that makes sense. So to work in the round, usually when you're working in the flat, you would then like chain and start working the opposite side. We're not doing that for this. When you work in the round, you stay uh, going around and around and you kind of spiral. So this is the stitch that we're going to want to put our hook inside of when we are going into our next round. So starting round two, we are going to then put two stitches inside that single stitch right there. We are going to increase. The way that we make our whale bigger and bigger and bigger each round is we start out with six stitches which you can see right here then we're going to want to increase those six stitches to 12 and then increase those 12 to 18 and turn those 18 the next round to 24 and then those 24 to 30 and that's all we're going to do for increasing so we're going to have uh, five rounds of increasing I believe I'm gonna have it listed as a pattern and I'm gonna pop it all up on the screen I actually figured out how to finally do it even though I've got a couple of you know computer issues uh, I have been using my phone for basically editing everything and it's kind of a big old pain in the butt but I'm figuring it out and I'm trying to make really good videos regardless so basically when you increase you're placing two stitches within a single stitch from the previous round so instead of just single crocheting one in this stitch, which is what you would usually do if you're just gonna go across. An increase would mean that you're gonna go inside underneath this little, so this is our last stitch right here. We're gonna go inside of the very first stitch that we created, the first single crochet from our last round. And we're going to single crochet, do the one loop, one loop, and then we're gonna go back inside that same loop that we just went into and we're going to do that again. So that creates, as you can see here, two stitches, one, two, inside that loop and it kind of looks a little bit wider and that's okay. They will have a little bit of a bigger hole than the rest of your stitches because you are putting more um, stitches inside that one hole so it's got to kind of be a bit more open. So we're going to do that for every single stitch for round two. We're going to increase every single one. We're going to be going from six stitches up to 12. So go one. This is the second stitch and then go back inside again. Two. Go inside here. One. And two. Go inside the next one. One. And two. Inside again. One and two. One thing I don't like about the soft party yarn is that the little sparkly, uh, it's basically wound in with the rest of the yarn. Sometimes they split and it makes a big, like, long issue there. I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. So we currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We need to do one more increase. So this is our last stitch. One and then go back inside there too. Now that we have 12 stitches, it is a lot easier to see where the spiral ends and begins. So here, you can place a stitch marker right on this little loop here, and you can keep track of it that way. But what I like to do is a lot less expensive. You don't have to go out and buy some stitch markers that you're just gonna end up losing. So I like to go just inside that little hole that we just did our two single crochets inside of and I'm going to pick up my tail I'm gonna wrap it and pull it through you're not doing anything really you're just pulling your tail through that little loop so that you can see where it begins and where it ends it keeps track of where you are so 
Here we have 12 stitches and we are round two. So we're gonna go to round three now. We on round three, we are going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase, one, increase, one, increase, one, increase, one, increase. So we're doing that six times. Because we are going to be increasing six stitches each time around, we're gonna be going from six to 12 to 18 to 24 to 30. You're adding six stitches each time you go around, and that means you're gonna single crochet one more space between the increase every time you increase uh, as you go down. So because you increased every single one and you only wanna increase six, you're going to go into this one and just do it once. And then you're going to go into this next stitch as I try not to split it. That's the issue with Susan Bates crochet hooks is sometimes it can split the yarn a little bit, but it makes it easier to go into the stitch itself because it's got this little pointy edge. It's a double-edged sword right there, or double-edged hook. Either way, so we're going to single crochet one. We just one increased, one, go into the next stitch and increase. One. And go into the next stitch. There's poly felt everywhere, I'm sorry. And increase. One. And then increase. One. Go into the next stitch and place two. Increase. Pull your yarn a little bit so that you actually have something to work with. And I believe this one's the last one. Oop, can't get off screen there. This is one and then increase. So now that I'm back to the beginning, I'm going to kind of pull off this so that it won't like uh, just fall out. We're gonna go through that hole that we just did our increases on. We're gonna pull out our tail from where it was and we're going to pull it through there and then just change where our start is. That way we can keep track of it a little bit better. We just finished with round three and now we're going to go on to round four where we're gonna go from 18 stitches to 24 stitches. So the, to do that, we're going to now, because we added a space between our last increase, you have to look at it this way. Every single time you increase, there's six points that you're kind of just trying to stay over because you want to increase over where you increased previously, essentially. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to single crochet one, two, and then increase. I say three and then four essentially because you're kind of going one, two, three, four in the same spot and then you do one, two, three, and then you go back inside the same one, four, and that's an increase. That's how I counted in my head, so I don't know if that helps anybody. I try to phrase things in different ways so that it makes sense to more people. Two three, four, one, two, three, and then do the increase, the four, one, two, three, four, one, this is the last one. Pull our tail a little bit. Three, four. By tail, I mean working yarn. There we go. So now I'm back to the start. I'm going to pull my tail, my uh, working yarn, out a little bit so that I don't lose it. I'm going to move my tail again just to keep track of where I am. And this is the last. There's so much polyfill. This is the last increase round. We are going to go from 24 stitches to 30 stitches on this fifth round. One, two, three, four. We're on our fifth round right here. So we're going to do three single crochet, and then on the fourth stitch, we're going to increase. So one, two, 
three, four, and increase. One, two, three, four, and increase. One, two, three, four, and increase. Or four, five, depending on how you want to phrase it. One, two, three, four, increase or five. Last one, three, and our very last increase, four and five. I'm going to move my tail again just to move my stitch marker along. And now we have 30 stitches actively going on our work. I'm going to pull my tail a little bit and then I'm going to uh, go around for four rounds. So essentially, you're going to single crochet 120 times to then get it to where we are. My pop socket just fell off. It's a rough life. All right, so essentially we're going to just single crochet around for 120 stitches. So there's 30, we're gonna do that four times. One, two, three, four, going around our work the, every single time. And once you've passed this marker four times, we will then work on the tail, which is a part of this. So I will be right back after I am done single crocheting around for four rounds or 120 stitches. Just single crocheting, we're not doing any more increasing. Be right back. All right, so I went around four times or 120 stitches. You can see here, starting from my little tag here, one, two, three, four rounds were single crocheted around and here I like to make the tail before I do the bottom. I actually attach the bottom after I do the tail um, and I just do it, I find that it's a bit more smooth. So for my single crochets you'll notice that I went through the front of the stitch only but for this part of the tail I'm going into the first stitch of round five. I'm considering the tail round five in order to, to do this. So I'm going to slip stitch, which means I'm going to take my yarn, wrap it, pull it through, and then pull it through. I'm not creating anything else. I like to make this chain a little tight, even though I know I'm going to be placing a bunch of single crochets inside of it, because I find that if I don't make this stitch tight, the hole in the center of my single crochets is a little bit bigger, so I try to make it as tight as I can, that way that that hole in the center of them is as, as small as I can get it, because I find that that looks better. So I'm gonna hold it and put a little bit more pressure when I'm chaining through once, and now I can kind of let off. That first chain is really tight and it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get into, but I like that, so I chain two. So I just do one and two, and the same as when I uh, did my first chain two, uh, initially, even though it is attached to something, I'm going to skip this second chain that I made. It's basically just being used to kind of round off the corner, and I'm going to go back inside that first chain and not split the yarn that I made really tight. So I'm back inside, and I'm going to place six single crochet. I split my yarn. It's not going. Hold on. There we go. That looks better. We're going to single crochet one, go back inside, and this is going to be a little bit tough. It's go back inside. It's going to be a little bit tighter than what you think. I think I just split something. Oops. Two, go back inside. Three. Oh no, I didn't see that. Ugh, I hate that. 
All right, four. Oh, well, it's that, that noticeable it went into the stitch. If you can't tell, there's like this ugly piece. Five, that just, oh, that does not look good. Come on, go inside the stitch. There it is, I hit it. Six. So I have six stitches inside that one piece now. I'm going to, I find that I like it better when I kind of go through this part of the chain and then I go back into the second chain. So I'll explain how I did that real quick. So this is the work that we uh, chained and slip stitched into initially. I'm gonna just kind of slip into that and then I'm gonna slip into the next stitch and then I'm gonna slip stitch through both of them. It's a little bit tight. And now I did a little slip stitch and now I'm going to do the same thing where I chain two and then I single crochet six inside. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to make that as tight as I can. That way the hole will be a little bit closed off and then I normal chain there. I'm gonna go skip this second chain and go into the first one and do six single crochet inside that one chain. It is a little overwhelming. And again, I do have my other video where I'm gonna timestamp it, put the thing up here on how to make this alternate tail. Um, some people prefer this. I actually think that this one looks really cute and I think it matches what I did for my mama whale in the orca whale video a little bit better. It's a good alternate tail to make. So that's why I wanted to do something a little bit different and a little bit more bubbly. Two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go inside this one stitch real quick, and then I'm gonna go into the third stitch of round five, and I'm going to slip stitch, slip stitch through them all. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to cut my yarn if I have scissors anywhere. Where's my unicorn scissors? Ah, I found my unicorn scissors. So, I love these scissors, they're so stinking cute. Um, I'm going to cut my tail, like so, and I'm going to pull my yarn out. And so now that is essentially done. That top part is done. I'm going to then pull my tail out, because I don't like it that long, and I'm gonna kinda just let it tuck on the inside. We're gonna leave this tail here for now, but I will hide it very shortly. Um, I'm going to take this yarn and kind of just put it to the side. I'm going to move my whales, and now that I actually have a ball, I'm gonna use my, oh, there's scissors in there too. Good to know. You know, noted. Um, I'm going to put my actual ball in my bowl, and I'm going to have my white yarn now. So if you, want to do whatever your underbelly color is, this is where that comes in. We're going to be doing our single crocheting around once and then doing some decreases to close off this belly. And then I'll show you how we do the fins too. So we're going to take our white and we have 30 stitches to pick up. And where I went through the front of the stitch only, my cat is not happy. <laughs> where I went through the front of the stitch only, You'll notice that there's these V's here. We only go through the front of the stitch. We're gonna go through only the back loop. This is considered the front loop, and this is considered the back loop. Front, back. We're gonna go through the back loop only. But first, I like to attach my yarn. Oh, I hate that. I hope that comes off. There we go. That looks a little bit better. There we go. Fixed it. That was the little blemish in the yarn itself when they tied it off apparently in the center of the skein. Not a great sign there. I'm going to go through the center stitch between the tails on the very back. These are all back loops that we're going to be going through. I'm going to pull my yarn down, kind of just hold it like so, and I'm going to wrap and chain one. Now I'm going to just let this yarn hang back here, chill out in the center of my piece. 
We are now going to work through the back loop of every single stitch across the way. What this does, and I'll show you in just a second going through the back loop, is it leaves the front loop just hanging there. And what I like about that, we're just gonna single crochet in every single one of those stitches, is it makes this little line that almost looks like a little lip. So I like that for the whale. We're gonna keep going down across and make sure that you're picking up 30 stitches along the way. If you need to fudge it a little bit, you need to frog things along, like you do you, but you want 30 stitches. Once we get to our 30 stitches, I'm gonna show you how I attach my eyes because that's right around where I like to attach my eyes. And I use nine to 12 meter, uh, I use nine to 12 millimeter uh, safety eyes. And I think I bought mine from Hobby Lobby, but I'm not 100% sure. They might have also been the ones that I bought off Wish. Um, I definitely think the Hobby Lobby ones are much better quality than the ones off Wish, but that's, you know, a given because it's Wish. But you can buy an infinite number of them on Wish and it's spectacular. So we're going to keep going through the back loop only. Oh no, I don't want that. There we go. And we keep going through the back loop all the way until we get back to the tail. I'm trying not to let that split. I always like to double check that once I get to here, um, I go and count around how many stitches I did because I don't like counting all the way up to 30. It's just kind of a big old pain in the butt. I should have to do one more there, but let me count real quick. Eight, there we go. It's 28. Now I'm going to make 29 by going into this. I'm going to A, pull that away so that it's not in my way. There's still one more that I have to go through the back loop of. That's 29. And now I'm going to go back into the very first stitch that I created here. I'm going to single crochet one. And that is the end of our first round here. We are now going to kind of make sure that these are all tucked. I'm gonna pull my tail here and I'm going to add my eyes. I like to add my eyes eight stitches from the tail. So right around here, go up along this spot here and I'm going to add the eyes. I need to find my giant thing of safety eyes. This is gonna be difficult. Hold on, I might just have to, there you go. I have this giant thing full of safety eyes because I usually buy them in bulk. There we go. I'm using some 12s here. Put that away. This thing's huge and I love these little art bin containers because Stay organized. All right, so I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's where I like to put my first eye, and that is right along the side. So I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side where I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to put the eye right here, and I find that if I place them even to the tail, they look even on the front. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna pop the backs on them and I can still do all my stitches and everything. I just, if I don't do them now, <laughs> I'll forget by the time that I've closed them off and it's just awkward where you don't have any eyes on your little whale. You can also not do this and then just embroider them or do anything else like that. So, you know, your choice. Here, I also like to take the tail and I like to pull it through into the center of the amigurumi so that it's on the inside and then I put it on the inside and I use less stuffing by putting all my tails on the inside. So here I'm going to do two different things that might be a little bit new to most people. So I'm going to be doing some decreasing and I'm going to be doing something that is called an invisible decrease. This is my preferred method for decreasing when it comes to amigurumi. For this decreasing we're essentially going to do the inverse of how we increased. 
So we're gonna be starting with our largest stitches here. So we increased every fourth and fifth stitch here. So we're going to single crochet every fourth and fifth stitch together. So we're going to go around and single crochet one. This one might be a little bit loose, that's okay. You can pull your tail afterwards and it'll make it tight again. Two, and remember we're only going through the front loop here. You don't have to, you can go through both loops if you really want to, but that makes it so that when we're doing our decreasing here, this will be easier. So I go through, we're gonna be doing, we did one, two, three. So we're gonna be taking our fourth and our fifth stitch, fourth and fifth, and decreasing them together. So I'm gonna go inside our fourth stitch. I'm not doing anything yet. I'm gonna go through our fifth stitch. So both loops are on my hook like so. I'm then going to draw my yarn and single crochet like normal through both of those loops. I'll show that again. It is invisible, except here you can see that both loops are going through there. It is practically invisible. So, one, two, not splitting our yarn for the fifth time, three, and then four, swoop back in and go through the fifth, fourth and fifth together, and single crochet together, like so. One, two, three, four, five, both stitches together, single crochet them together. One, two, I split my yarn, two, I split them a lot, but I still prefer a Bates over a boys. I just can't get those crochet hooks. One, two, three, four, and five. And it's not the tip I don't like of those hooks. I like the pointiness of this. It's really the fact that those hooks don't have a deep enough groove where I can actually catch my yarn, I find. That's my little side rant. So four and five are together. One, two, three, four, and five go together. One, and this is our last decrease of this round. Two, three, four, and five crocheted together. So now we are going to be taking our stitches from 24 down to 18. We're decreasing six stitches each round. Uh, we went from 30 down to 24 and now we're going from 24 down to 18. The way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one, two, and then our third and our fourth stitch are going to be put together. So third and fourth, both decrease together. One, two, three, and four. You might have an issue with having your hand get in the way of the eyes, but you kind of just got to work through it. One, two, three, nope, three, <laughs> and four together. One, two, three, oh, and four, oops. One, two, no, polyfill don't fly away. Three and four go together. One, two, three, and four. At this point, if it helps you, you can take your white tail and pull it through as a marker. I might just do that real quick just to make it so that it's visible for everyone. I like to take the tail and just kind of pull it through and you can see where your ending begins and starts, but I usually use my tail 
as a marker for where it begins and starts. You'll also notice that your decrease kind of starts curving slightly this way. That's okay, it's just because that's just what happens. I think that's really cute. And now we're at the point where we're at 18 stitches and we're gonna go from 18 to 12. But first, I'm going to stuff as much as I feel comfortable stuffing for right this second. The way that I stuff is I take a big splotch of my polyfill and I just kind of roll it and I kind of cup it towards the top first. And then I do the same thing, but then I kind of cup it against the eyes just to make sure that they're not poking anything and kind of cup along the sides. I always go along the sides before I stuff the center. And this rolling it like so against my hands kind of makes it just a slight bit more compacted and can work with my, you know, piece. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna pull my tail, my loop a little bit out so that it doesn't, I don't lose it. And I make sure that I'm cupping along the sides and leaving the center kind of alone. I wanna make sure that it's not got any bumps so I kind of try to smooth it out as best I can. I am not a master of stuffing my amigurumi. I actually suck at it. It is my least favorite thing and I swear to goodness even with like my big amigurumi. With these it's not as bad because if you mess up it's, it's not as likely but if you do you can easily just kind of pull it out and, and it's not a big deal. I've had some of my Luna squishes that I have messed up on and I just keep ripping it out and it's just so frustrating. I get so frustrated trying to stuff my amigurumi. So if anybody has any good tutorials on how to stuff, shoot them down in the description, uh, down in the comments down below. Seriously, like I just am terrible at it. I hate to say that I suck at something, but like I suck at trying to, to stuff my amigurumi. I am not good at it. All right, so here I'm still gonna stuff some more, but I'd like to get down to 12 stitches so that I can kind of stuff some more around that. So we're going to, to get down to 12 stitches, I'm going to single crochet one and then decrease every single stitch, uh, every other stitch. So single crochet one and then decrease. It's gonna get harder to show as I get down to the center because it's kind of rounded. Two and three to go together, one, Then two and three go together. One. Then two and three go together. One. Two and three go together. One. Decrease two and three together. And then this is the last repetition. One and decrease. Because I've stuffed, I'm not going to be able to move my tail uh, upward. Well, I could, but it's just, I don't think it's worth it. I'm going to stuff a little bit more so that it's a little bit more stuffed, obviously. And. I'm actually getting very close to the end. Then we will work on the fins and then this little bad boy will be done. He is a super quick and easy project. You could probably make one in once you're comfortable. If this is not something that you do on the regular basis, if you're not an experienced crocheter, this could take some time. I've actually, like the first time I made my ninja, it took me a solid three days to try to make. So don't feel embarrassed if this does not take you, if this takes you longer, but you will get faster over time. And once you become experienced, then this is a very easy and quick project to get done. I, I promise it will get easier as you practice more. And the big thing with crocheting that I have to say is consistency. As long as you are consistently doing the same thing over and over again, it will look consistent. And that is a big thing when it comes to your stitches and your work. As long as you are doing the same across all of it, it will look nicer. So just try to do the same thing as much as you can. Experiment. If you don't like how a certain stitch looks, then on your next project, do it a little differently. Try to figure out other ways that you can do things and 
That's all I can really say is try to consistently do what you're comfortable with and what you like. That's all you can really do. But now that we are down to 12 stitches, we're going to decrease every single one of these stitches down to six. And then I'll show you how I close off the amigurumi uh, for the final six stitches. So this is a stitch that we went through. So we're gonna go through this stitch and this stitch and we're going to decrease them together. This stitch and the next stitch decrease. Oh, I missed. <gasps> oh, I didn't even spot that. Let me try that again. All right, we're gonna go from 12 down to six. One, two, together. And we go one and two together. Both of these decreased. It's the third time that I've decreased. We're gonna be decreasing six times essentially. One, two, because we're going from 12 down to six. This is really hard to show because I'm trying to show the angle, but it's, it's more difficult and my camera is shaking. There we go. One and two. And finally, this is the last decrease. One and two. I'm going to take my unicorn scissors. I'm going to then cut, leave a six inch tail just for sewing. We're gonna take our needle and just kind of pull it so that the tail goes through and up. There's a hole there. What do we do about it? This is my favorite method when it comes to closing up amigurumi. I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm going to take my tail and I'm gonna go through the back through to the front of the stitch of the, st uh, the next stitch right there, pull it through, do that for every single stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna to go to the next stitch, go to the next stitch, kind of just keep rotating and popping into all six stitches. Well, six and you're gonna go through the top of the stitch that you started with. So this is the last one. Technically, it's a seventh stitch that you've gone through, but you're gonna go through that. There's still a hole, but watch as you pull the tail, that closes and it looks lovely. I like to go through the very top of the stitch again. You don't have to do this, but I like to do this. And then I go through my work and I kind of pierce it as close out of the white as I can. I don't like to go through the blue because if I don't pull the white tight enough, then it will not, um, it, it will look funny through the white, uh, through the blue. So I try to pull that again and that is how I close up my little amigurumi bottom. It is also seamless and it looks really nice in my opinion. Uh, you can do a slip stitch off, all kinds of ways that you can finish off your amigurumi. This is just how I do it. I like to pull on my tail and make sure that it's nice and tight before I try to cut. It's tight as I'm cutting, so that way when it recoils, it'll go inside your stuffing. I like that too, so I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to cut that. And now your body is done. You have your tail already formed on the back of your whale. And so here, from here, we're going to move all of our stuffing off of our desk because I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm going to move my white and we're gonna go back to our blue yarn over here. As you can see, I, don't go over there, please. There we go. As you can see, I uh, balled my yarn earlier. I'm gonna plop this over here into the bowl. And now, as I go in and out of focus, you can go over there. We are going to take our yarn and I'm gonna take my hook and I'm gonna go through the center between the eye and the tail. This will be the fourth stitch from the eye or the fifth stitch from the tail, technically kind of. It's like just dead center. You count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, no, this is the fourth stitch. There we go. Whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you, wherever you want your tail, I like it dead center between the safety eye and the tail. I'm gonna take my tail and kind of leave a nice, I don't know, five inch long tail right there. I'm gonna hold it against my whale. I'm then going to take my yarn, wrap and slip, and then chain one. So I just slipped my yarn on there and then I chained. So let me do that again. 
right here. My hook is inside, my yarn is across here. I'm gonna wrap and pull it through, and then I'm gonna chain. So then, I'm still holding my, my tail here a little bit. I'm gonna go back inside that same fourth loop that we were starting out in, and we are going to put four single crochet inside that one loop. So one, two, three, four. And you'll notice that it's kind of blown out a little bit. It's a little bit big. There we go, I'm trying not to split my yarn. I'm gonna go back inside and I'm gonna slip stitch and I'm gonna chain one. Now I'm gonna cut my tail and then I'm just gonna pull it out. So now we've got our little fin there. So I'm gonna hide my tail. Try to go as far up as I can so that it's far away from the fin as I can be. And I'm going to grab this one now. I'm gonna go underneath the stitch, just try to get it as close to where it came from in the first place. And then I'm gonna try to get it as far up towards the top as I can. And that one fin is done. I like how it kind of looks a little curved. I'm also going to take my yarn tail ends. I'm going to pull on them as I'm cutting them so they're nice and taut right there. So I'm going to snip this one as close as I can, trying not to cut the actual whale. And then as I push down on it, the tails go inside of the amigurumi and they're hidden. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side where I flip this side determine where the center is so I'm gonna go right there it's right dead center between the tail and the eye that way they're even as even as they can be I'm gonna take my tail pull that down so that it's nice and long wrap pull through and chain go inside that same stitch once twice thrice three times oh what is it when it's four i should google that four times <laughs> and then i'm going to go back inside slip stitch chain and then cut my tail again pull my tail through and then i just tied my tails and that is essentially what you need to do in order to make a whale. This is an updated version of it where I do the tail a little bit differently. It matches more of what I did for my orca whale for my mama uh, that I did in my last video for the orca whale. And I'm pretty happy with how these little whales are turning out. I like the tails. They're a little less, I mean, they're a little bit more no nonsense and they're bubblier. I like how they're kind of cupped in a circle. They're not perfect, but I do like that this pattern is a little, just a little bit cuter. And I like how it turned out. He's a super adorable little whale. And I like how all these bad boys turned out. Again, if you're interested in doing this kind of tail, timestamps are where we started this tail. And I'll put them down below in the description as well. And that's pretty much all there is to this cute little pattern. Um, we have all kinds of social media links. We have a Ravelry, which you can go over and find links for down in our description as well. There is a printable pattern for this whale over there on our Ravelry. We also have Facebook, Instagram. If you make one of these, do share photos of the whales. I love logging in and getting notifications. I get notified every time somebody has a uh, has linked me to show me the whales that they make and I absolutely love seeing them because they're super cute. You can actually find them all on my Instagram page under like the tags little profile under my profile and it shows what people have done and what they're making and it's super adorable. And I've also really liking uh, seeing people making the Luna squishes. I have one of those over there for the unicorn. She is really cute too. And I love the bunny that I made and I just love seeing people make things. I love when people share them with me. And I also have a Patreon if anybody's interested in trying to support the channel. We also have PayPal links. So if you're interested in doing something monetarily, then you know, those links are down below. In case you're interested in supporting the channel, cause I do actually do this mostly full time between the patterns and everything else. I have another 
channel that I started. So if you're interested in that, links are also down in the description. There's links for everything. This other channel, I talk about my actual life and health and all kinds of stuff. And if you're interested in that, again, that channel is called Things Your Sister Says, and it's down in the description. Uh, I hope you liked this video and I hope it was a little bit easier to understand, a little bit slower. I know that I talk fast and I tend to move fast. I tend to crochet quickly. Um, so I'm trying to slow things down a little bit and I've got a better camera. So I was able to keep things in focus a little bit better this time around because my goodness, my hands were just learn how to crochet with me all the way over here. I understand it's frustrating and I, I can't do anything about it because that video is has got an insane amount of followers and insane amount of views on it at this point. It's kind of embarrassing that that's like what I'm best known for when I've done better videos since then. All right, um, that's pretty much just gonna be what I'm rambling about. So until next time, guys, bye.